Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Anur the Light. Many young people leave home after matric to further their studies, often for the very first time. This can be both a stressful and unnerving experience, so it helps to have some kind of support structure. We visited the University of Free State, where the Muslim Students Association is active in seeing to the needs of Muslim students. There are many young people who find themselves away from home for the first time once they attend university. It can be a challenging time as they deal with all kinds of emotions, as well as situations such as being a young adult and being on their own often in a foreign place. It is for this reason that student bodies such as the Muslim Student Association is extremely beneficial to young Muslims who are experiencing this. I come from Woodbank, uh, and Woodbank we have not a massive Muslim community, but we have a very a close Muslim community and coming here to UFS it, it was quite difficult in that sense because that sense of community wasn't there but I mean you know you you make friends and you start to settle down as things go first it was very difficult being away from home so basically the MSA we started with our main objective was you know just to firstly identify Muslim students when they come here and make it easier the transition coming from home you know and when you come to the UFS and then in our second year and as we went along we started doing more events um, but our main objective is just to provide, you know, the students that sense of security when they come here and someone to, like, approach, because we have 12 members on the executive, you know, you can feel, maybe you feel comfortable with someone, you approach them and say you need some help, you need to know, for example, where there's a lal food, that's the main problem always. You just approach them and you make it easier, because those small things, you know, then it makes it feel more like home. The University of the Free State was established in 1904 and up until recently exclusively for white Afrikaans South Africans. It is a predominantly Christian institution, but the Muslim student community is growing annually. With such a small community, there are numerous challenges that they face, and a place to pray as well as halal food are top of the list. There's no halal food on campus, and you know that's also one of our objectives this year after we secure our praying facility to try and get, you know, halal food on campus. But it's, again, once again, it's very difficult because we have private vendors on campus and it, in order to have halal food, you need someone to, you know, come and open a place here. But I mean, if someone identifies themselves from within the community or from somewhere else, we'd be more, will, more than willing to assist them with that. Because it is a need, it's a big need. If you want to eat something from one of the restaurants on campus, you need to order chips or something vegetarian. And it's like, it's quite difficult because you know, when you're feeling for meat, you really need meat in your life. You can't just... Yeah, but many of us bring food from home, so... But once in a while, you also want to go to a takeaway and be, be able to, like, eat halal food. Despite and possibly because of the small community, the Muslim students have found themselves united in Islam, establishing a progressive Muslim society, a home away from home hosting a slew of social events from game evenings and brides, the MSA has become a unique support system for students living a long distance from home. There's a spirit of togetherness in the MSA and it's very important when you're away from home because you're away from your family and I know because I have three sisters at home, I'm one of four, and we have a huge family so being away from home is quite difficult for me, but with all the MSA events, you get to meet new people, interact with new friends, and that also just creates that sense of home for you. The people that you meet here, they become your family. So naturally, you know, family is family. Uh, so we have this very close-knit bond, and we try to do a lot of things together, especially as MSA, we try to do... We try, apart from our like, community events and our social work, we try to do many events where the students just get an opportunity you know, to wind down and relax and you know, just in an informal way to socialize. Regardless of the many challenges, the MSA students make no excuse for a lapse in their faith or duty. Hosting Jumu'ah prayers on campus, monthly lectures with a local imam, and mass iftar programs during Ramadan. And with the massive success of their water collection campaign, collecting 20,000 litres of water distributed throughout the Free State Province, the MSA students have set a beautiful example for the rest of our country's youth to follow. Personally, I admire the students because, like you said, they are very small, they are a minority in the university, if we look at the universities of Joburg and Durban. But yet the fact that they whoever's involved with the MSA, it's all voluntary. It's from their own side, you know, it's not uh, something that they had to apply for. 
but yet being in this environment where in today's world it's very easy to get caught into your, you know, getting involved in all the wrong things and the things that attract us. But yet for these youngsters to leave home, no one to check up on them, no one to supervise them, but yet the dedication that they give towards, uh, towards the MSA and just towards Deen as it, uh, Islam as a, as a whole, the fact that they are the representatives of Islam and how they hold up their religion and how they hold up Islam while they are in the varsity, it's really, I, I personally, I really admire that for the students. In spite of the challenge of adapting to an unfamiliar environment, it is inspiring to see that unity can be a result of a shared difficulty, taking each hurdle as encouragement to bring themselves even closer to Allah, even while the burdens of real life beckons. It's heartening to know that young Muslims can have a home away from home and the challenges addressed in such a positive way. It's time now for our wellness segment with the lovely Dr. Nihal Dafris. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Wa alaikum salam. We're talking breast health. Tell us more about breast health. What, what is it and why is it important? I feel that breast health is sort of very important to create awareness surrounding common breast problems. Stuff like lumps, and skin changes, and pain and tenderness in the breast. How do we approach problems such as breast lumps? To find a lump is always an alarming thing for any woman. But we approach it sort of on, depending on the, on, the, on the age of the lady and the, the menstrual cycle. So if it's a young lady or a lady that's under the age of 30 and she has a, a breast lump, or she discovers a breast lump, um, that breast examination should be repeated after the menstrual period. However, if that lump still persists, um, we do sort of um, indicate further testing along the lines of an ultrasound or a fine needle aspiration. If the lady is above 30 and she develops a new lump, um, she should go for sort of a mammogram followed by or perhaps also a ultrasound as well. You just mentioned mammograms and I've heard about abnormal mammograms. What is that? So a mammogram is a specialised test looking at the breast. Um, it's done by a specialised technician and those are sort of the tests that will sort of indicate whether your lesion or, or the breast lump looks suspicious or not. If it's a, and also if it looks suspicious because they also need to sort of go for further testing like an MRI or a breast biopsy. And it can also um, sort of rule out non-suspicious lesions, like benign lesions or non-cancerous lesions. What are the other breast problems? Breast tenderness is extremely common and once again also hormonal related. So it's related to menstrual cycles, so you can say it's a cyclic um, tenderness that you get. Um, so non-cyclic non -cyclic breast pain refers to, uh, can refer to other structures within the breast. So connected tissue, muscle, the underlying bone. Um, it can also, heartburn can also present with breast pain and breast tenderness. There's also um, infections that can affect the breast. So uh, pregnant, a lot of lactating women get a mastitis that can affect the breast. Um, and there's breast abscesses as well that can present like that. And then lastly, I want to mention, you can also get skin changes. Now the normal skin changes, you can get eczema of the breast, it's like itchy, scratchy, or itchy, scaly skin that you get over the breast can just be a normal eczema. But sort of tethering of the, of the breast can also be an indication of a skin, uh, of breast cancer. What about breast awareness and breast health in men? Yes, you do get, it's very rare to get men with breast cancer. Often when men present with, with, with increased or or enlarged breast tissue it can be related to other medical problems, liver, liver failure or liver issues. Medication can also present. So any male that presents with enlarged breast tissue should, in, should go and see, uh, seek medical attention. And shukran Dr. Nihal once again for always enlightening us with your knowledge. It's always great to be here. There you have it from the horse's mouth. It pays to look after your health and we should all strive to do this. Prince Albert in the Karoo is our next stop where we visit local blacksmith 
Kashif Bule, who has made the small town his home and place of work. <laughs> The small town of Prince Albert in the Western Cape is well known as a home to artists and craftspeople. In 2011, Kashif Bouli from Burkarp in Cape Town decided he had had enough of city life and uprooted his whole family to move there. Growing up in the city, I sort of was always attracted by the mountain and the sea and got a bit tired of all that the concrete jungle. And we came, we did a road trip and discovered the beautiful village of Prince Albert and fell in love with it. And to my surprise, I decided to be brave enough and do this movie because we believed it'd be good quality of life for us as a family, especially our two young girls growing up. Kashif is a self-taught and trained blacksmith with a global reputation for delivering quality products. He set up a small workshop on the periphery of the small town and the rest is history, as they say. We call ourselves today artist blacksmiths um, and basically blacksmithing is one of the oldest trades in the world. Um, it's also what makes it interesting. It's one of the, well, it's the only trade that works with the four elements of nature and you apply the four elements and yeah, you're the fifth. People commission me to do decorative metalwork um, that would entail functional art. Um, Basically anything made out of metal. Uh, I think what the blacksmith does basically at the end of the day is manipulate steel to, to whatever shape he wants. And that's in a nutshell. So I've got a workshop full of tools and jigs and stuff and uh, that's where how I apply my trade. Even though he's so far from the city, orders continue to pile up. And every morning Kashif jumps on his bike and cycles the kilometer to work. In the beginning it was tough, um, a lot of my work is still in Cape Town. Luckily for me, my work allows me to be able to set up shop anywhere. I've sort of built a reputation up for myself and um, people are comfortable with it. So I still have a lot of my old clients and also moving to a village like Prince Albert. Uh, I've been labelled the village blacksmith, which is quite amazing. For my family, it's been absolutely amazing. My girls, my two daughters, they absolutely love Prince Albert. They love being out here. They get to walk barefoot and live a country lifestyle, something that I'm still trying to get used to because I'm a bit of a, a city freak. I miss the city. Um, but yeah, as I said, I get a lot of my work still in Cape Town. So for me, it's been difficult, but for my family, I don't think they, they're keen on moving out of here anytime soon. Blacksmithing is one of the oldest trades in the world. Their craft is honed over years and many master blacksmiths remain trainees until the day they hang up their tools. What would happen is a client will get hold of me. Um, say, for example, they want, to design, they want me to design up a, a chandelier for them. I'll design the chandelier or they come with a reference and I work from the reference. Um, lots of times people, they want something unique and individual, something that's not been done before. So that's where I come in and I say, okay, I take my designing skills and I come up with something that suits their need. And then I set the process in motion where I manufacture and, and, and a lot of the tools are quite old. Um, unfortunately in South Africa, blacksmithing is not as popular as in Europe and in the States. Um, so. We have to import tools, um, but being a blacksmith, you learn to make your own tools. And sometimes when, you, when you're faced with a situation where you uh, have to do a job that has never been attempted before, you got to start from scratch. You've got to make the tools to make the tools to make the job. Training is very important to Kashif, and over the years, he's managed to pass on his skills to many young people. His latest apprentice is a local from the township nearby who will walk away with a well-developed skill and be able to create work for herself. I've taken on a new apprentice. Her name's Jackie. She's been here for a week, so she's basically fresh. And um, it's exciting because I haven't uh, had a woman as an apprentice before. And uh, one of the challenges of being a blacksmith is you have to be strong. You, the work's quite physical, so It'd be interesting to see how she, she copes, um, hopefully. I think she's got it in her to, to, to be good at what she wants to do. Um, 
but still in the early stages. So to be able to do this job alone, I can, but it's, it's time consuming. Um, that means I've got to sometimes make certain tools to hold something down for me, whereas if I have a person, they just make my job a lot easier. And also I'm putting back, um, I'm providing them with, with, with knowledge and skill that can hopefully they'd be able to use someday. Home is where the heart is, and Kashif has managed to not only make this a reality, but is also able to have a job that fulfills him. The words of poet Khalil Gibran springs to mind. When we see Bouli as he is affectionately known, work is love made visible. Our monthly events calendar is up next. Remember, this is for you to showcase any community events happening in your area. Please send us information as early as possible as we work well in advance. For 13 days, Johannesburg brings you an exciting shopping experience inspired by the Dubai Shopping Festival. Africa's signature shopping event will have you enjoying fabulous sales, awesome prizes and a fun way to hang out with family and friends. This 13-day shopping extravaganza will be taking place from the 28th of July until the 9th of August at selected malls in Johannesburg. The historic park town has many stories to tell. The gold rush that brought many to Johannesburg in search of work and wealth are so often forgotten. Rabble to Randlords takes one on a tour of the Workers' Museum in Parktown and along sites around the area as we remember the unsung heroes of the past. Why not register for a basic modern conversational Arabic course today and learn the language of Islam? With interactive teaching methodologies, the course can be taken by anyone with an interest in learning the language. The course is a beginner's guide to Arabic and will be offered in Cape Town starting 6 August 2016. Walk-in registration is at the Dean's Store in Lansdowne. Celebrate women this month by supporting the Hospital Angel Network as they host a ladies-only high tea fundraiser at Taronga Road Hall in Cape Town on the 28th of August. The group is an initiative under the Discover Isla Center and all funds go toward training workshops for volunteers at the Red Cross and Somerset hospitals. As prices soar and the cost of living becomes unbearable, we need to think of innovative ways to work with our money. Hosted by Sanzaf in Durban, the Budget Beaters program aims to teach the public how to cook formulated recipes on a budget. Don't miss their cooking demonstration and make some changes in your life on the 25th of August 2016 at the Sanzaf Durban offices. As you welcome a new addition to the family, along with it comes parenting questions and an array of things to buy. The Mama Magic Baby Expo in Durban is there to lend a helping hand by bringing you the latest baby and pregnancy products, seminars, shows and live entertainment for the family. Make your pregnancy and parenting experience an adventure by attending this wonderful event. In my neck of the woods, the weather is still perfect for a hot cup of soup and relaxing under my warm blanket. But our travel segment always makes me want to get up and go. This week we're in the Western Cape. Speer outside Stellenbosch is well known for its ecotourism initiatives and the Eagle Encounter allows one an up close and personal experience with these majestic birds of prey. Hi there guys, I'm Venant. I'm here at Eagle Encounters in Stellenbosch and yeah, I'm a handler here at Eagle Encounters working with raptors of all sorts and all kinds, yeah. We've got big eagles, we've got an emu as well from more Australia and so on. We've got a few water birds, we've got blue cranes, big vultures that do shows as well. Uh, you can hold bunnies, rabbits, snakes, bearded dragons, bits of everything. But we mainly focus on your raptors, on the birds of prey, the meat-eating guys and so on. The facility prides itself on being a place where the visitor can interact with the eagle in its natural environment. It's not a zoo as they say and visitors are encouraged to touch as well as hold the eagle. Our daily opening times are from 9.30 to 5 every day. The only day we are closed is Christmas Day and you can come in and you can watch the 11 o'clock flying show, 2 o'clock flying show, 4 o'clock flying show. We also do a secretary bird show at 3 o'clock where we guys show you a snake simulation just showing you guys how the, the secretary birds hunt in the wild. 
Education plays a pivotal role in helping human beings understand the world around them. And the Eagle Encounter is surely something that will be remembered long after the visit. Picture postcard perfect Stellenbosch is a hidden gem in the Western Cape. This quaint little dorpy is the second oldest in South Africa and the area around Church Street is its hub. There is an old world charm much like the cities of Europe with cobblestoned alleyways and sidewalk cafes serving some of the most delectable dishes. Art galleries showcase contemporary as well as cutting edge artists and the hip fashion boutiques as something for everyone. Stellenbosch and the Church Street Hub make for an entertaining day out with so much to see and do. It can be reached quite easily from Cape Town and visitors will spend a memorable time there. After all the exercise, the next best thing would be a meal and the newly opened Turkish inspired Saray restaurant is a wonderful place to do this. So, I mean, from civil engineering to being a restaurant here, is quite a big leap of sorts but now I always say instead of manufacturing and designing buildings or bridges or roads or transport systems I'm now just engineering food. Nadia who is best known as the head of South African women in engineering recently got married and needed to find something for her husband to do. As food is such a special part of people's lives they decided to dabble in this and the outcome is this restaurant. Um, and I always tell my customers, Turkish food, it's a little bit drier and a little bit um, less spicy than what South Africans are particularly used to. Um, but what we've done is, is, as I said, we've made Turkish food better. We do a lot of fresh ingredients, so we only use farm fresh ingredients in all our food. Um, we use uh, very, very authentic spices. So if you had a kebab in Turkey, it's going to be a slightly spicier version in South Africa. And I think that's what really makes us so unique is, is that we've got a unique taste and it's, it's something new, it's something different. Apart from the food, there's also that quintessential Middle Eastern pastime. Shisha and pipes are prepared on site. The restaurant has become very popular in a short space of time and bookings are essential. I know some of you like to sleep late and miss our show, but don't despair. Every week the episode is uploaded to our YouTube page for your viewing pleasure. The more views we get, the longer we stay on air. I'm done for today, but we'll be back again next week, same time, same place. From me, Mario Mukwanda, Salang Hantle, Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm.